Okay, my wonderful, wonderful friends. I would say this is probably one of the biggest days ever at Mud Fossil University. This just came out. It says that the new evidence for the controversial theory that the electron is composed of two particles. I've shown this for quite some time now. And, you know, quantum physics and all that stuff, they really, really take their time to, to make any decision. And it appears Princeton, he's coming out on a limb and saying it looks like we have two particles in the electron. Now, what they're doing is something different than what we did. We, they're using extreme conditions. We didn't have to do that. We did this in what we would call ambient conditions, the temperature and the pressure. Because you, if you use the right pressure and the right temperature, you can make almost anything happen. You know, and they're down by absolute zero. We're right in, the, right in the room, right just right here. And we can see the electrons which they're talking about, and we can see their dipoles, which they're talking about, and we can also split the charges, which I don't think they can, that they know that, but I don't know what they know exactly, because this is pretty new to me. I just saw this, and uh, I decided I better get my word out and uh, stake my claim. <laughs> we did this five, six years ago, and uh, let me show you what we came up with. Well, they absolutely completely destroy the current physics because the nucleus is nothing like they're talking about. And they realize this now. They just have no way to explain it. And I do. This is the wave, and the particle is way back here, but it's got a magnetic region which pushes all everybody else's magnetic region because everything has a magnetic region around it. If you look up the cashmere effect, you'll see as particles come close together, they separate because they all have a magnetic charge on their surface. This is that wave being pulled forward in an extreme manner through the Venturi. We can vary this, we can change the particles, we can do all kinds of things with the Venturi. We can tunnel it, we can spin it, we can do a million things. I can't do it. We don't have time to do it. Well, we don't have the resources, let me put it that way. Um, now, that's the particle. And you can see it's obviously being sucked out of the wave. And this is the, literally the particle. And it has a black and a dark spot. And it is attached, no question about it. When it hit the Venturi, it exploded. And this is the explosion right here. Uh, it comes across, undescript, starts to back up, starts to box up, and then explodes at the Venturi. That's the explosion where they separate. The separation is right here you see it that the black balls are walking away from the white and the whites turn into the shower that's the muons and it is also the dark matter okay before i get in too deep electrons make everything there is excess electrons are heat that's all it is heat and electricity now they claim that a new discovery led by Princeton University could upend understanding of how electrons behave under extreme conditions. Now, they're talking about extreme in quantum materials. Everything's quantum. The finding provides experimental evidence that this familiar building block of matter behaves as it, which is the electron, behaves as if it is made of two particles, which it is. And I showed this, and I, or I will. One particle gives the electron its negative charge. That's the glower. And that doesn't give it its ex explosive charge. It's push to shove. Any other pu ne electron it hits into, it's going to push it and it's going to shove back. That makes glow. The harder it pushes, the harder it pushes back, the glower it glows. So they think, and now they realize that we have, but this they're still wrong about the other side. I believe, I could be wrong. But they say that the build behaves as if it has two particles. One gives the electron its explosiveness, the negative charge. Another supplies its magnet-like property known as spin. Well, magnet-like property, it is. The black particle is a, the attractor. I don't know. And it is a magnet-like property. I don't know why they see it gives us its spin. The, the electron, as it bangs into other electrons, that's what gives it its spin. Because one of them has to roll off the other one. They're both pushing each other. They're not going to just stop. One is going to go that way. This one is going to go this way. And that what's great makes a right-hand spin. And this one hits this one. It makes this one spin this way. This one goes this way. It spins this way. It's a, it's a push-to-shove spin. They both spin in the same direction because they're banging each other. Now, 
I said to this to, to these people to see, uh, you know, I'd like to work with them. I'd love to be into the middle of this. I think I had, because they're down to absolute zero. Now, all absolute zero is, there is no extra electrons. So what happens at absolute zero? You get superconductivity. Why? Because there's no extra electrons. Everything goes in there instantaneously. Super conductor. All the extra electrons jump in there because that is a place that wants them. Simple as that. Wherever it's hot, it pushes them into wherever it's cold. Wherever it's cold, it sucks them from wherever it's hot. It's just that that's all it is. So it's only an excess of electrons in one place or the other. Think about it that way. Okay, these, this literally is the electron in totality. They show electron, neutrino, muon, neutrino. When it concusses in a different medium, it turns into a muon black ball, an electron shower, which I have shown or will show you right this instant. And that is on concussion. We see this. We see the black ball separate from the white ball. Originally, they were attached together in a box-like configuration, just like this, with an upspin or a downspin. It doesn't make any difference. When they hit here, they break apart the black balls, which are the muons, and I say it's dark matter. They separate from the white electron shower. That's your dipole electron. And here's what they look like when they're together and make a photon. This is the red photon. Let's see here, red photon. There they are right there. All right, that's a photon. Two electrons back to back. It makes it neutral. It bounces. One electron will incorporate into you and burn you. You know, a little static, lightning, all that stuff, very explosive electricity. Light is, is a different story. It, it bounces. It can hit you hard enough, enough of it at one time to heat you up a little bit, and, but not like lightning. Lightning and... Uh, that sort of stuff. Now, and the green is exactly the same. You see, here's a green. The same particle. Yeah. Identical. So, we know we have a dipole, a dipole back to back, and that's what gives them that. Now, I've seen them in every different configuration you can imagine. And uh, I've also seen something that nobody else has ever seen. This one right here. That, these are Higgs fields. That came backwards and concussed with the Higgs field and did this. That is nothing like anything else in the light realm that I have ever seen. So I'm going to leave it at that. I think I've demonstrated that light is a dipole, just as I've been saying. And here it is right there. I showed them back to back together. They're obviously separated, and they obviously come back immediately. This, I believe, is harvestable energy. I would love to talk to these people at Princeton. I'm hoping they'll get a hold of me. I, I did try to contact them, so we'll see. All right, I love you all. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks. Bye.